Hey guys, what's up? This kicking boot-shaped country in Southern Europe is one of the most popular vacation destinations in the world because of its art treasures, trendy fashion, beautiful landscapes, passionate people, and world-class food. Italy has everything from the sharp hills of the Dolomites to the jaw-dropping coast of Sardinia. You'll see it has more to offer than just pizza and pasta. Italy is so much more than that. I'd like to show you my favorite places in Italy, so here are my top 10. Starting the list with the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea, Sicily. It's an independent area of Italy that is made up of a number of smaller islands. The Strait of Messina, which is two miles wide, separates it from Calabria, which is on the mainland. Sicily is full of art and history. The Valley of the Temples in Agrigento, one of the most beautiful examples of Greek buildings in the 5th century BC. The Greeks built seven churches here. The Carthaginians burned them down, but the Romans rebuilt them four centuries later. The Temple of Concordia is one of the best preserved. It has the classic Greek pillars, which makes you wonder how it looked when it was first built. And the Baroque churches in Palermo. On Sicily's east coast, Catania is an old port city. What's crazy about Catania is that it's at the base of the huge, 3,326-meter-tall Mount Etna volcano is the island's most interesting natural feature, which is Europe's largest active volcano. It's crazy to see ash flying out of the top, and what a crazy, beautiful city. Next on the list is Cinque Terre, which means five lands. Located on the coast of Italy's northwestern Liguria region, you can either take a train from La Spezia or a boat to get here. In 1997, the area was also named a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It has some of the most beautiful scenery in the country, including steep cliffs and wine terraces that date back hundreds of years. It's full of beautiful things and one of them is a set of climbing trails that have been around for hundreds of years and offer some of the best views of the coast. The Blue Trail is a paved path that goes through all five towns. And yes, it's made up of five villages, Rio Maggiore, Manarola, Vernazza, Monterosso, and Corniglia. One of my favorite places is the small town of Vernazza. It has the only natural port in all of Cinque Terre. It's still one of the most authentic fishing towns on the Italian Riviera, and I can't get over how beautiful and colorful the houses are. Next, fashion and history get along well in Milan. It was nearly destroyed by heavy bombing during World War II. Since then, it has been rebuilt and is now one of the richest towns in Europe. Milan is known as a mega fashion center with lots of designer shops, like the high-end Galleria Vittorio Emanuele at Ville. It also has many world-famous treasures like Leonardo da Vinci's painting The Last Supper, the La Scala Opera House, the Castello Sforzesco, and one of the world's biggest Gothic cathedrals. Still, compared to Italy's mostly historic cities, Milan sometimes seems less Italian and more like a glamorous city with modern design. Located in the Campania area in the southwest of Italy, I have to say that this is one of the most beautiful places in all of Europe, not just Italy. About three hours by car from Rome is the Amalfi Coast. The coast runs for 30 miles along the southern side of the Sorrento Peninsula. It's hard to believe that this place is real. Now, Positano is one of the most famous towns on the Amalfi Coast, and you won't believe your eyes when you see it. It's hard to beat the view of colorful villas in the mountains and boats and yachts in the Mediterranean Sea as a background. If you can handle the narrow roads, you should drive all the way along the coast and check out all the beautiful towns. The city of Atrani is one of the best preserved ancient towns on the Amalfi Coast. It's one of the most interesting places along the coast. Anyway, the Path of the Gods is a six kilometer path that goes along the top of the coast's rocks. You will see some views that will make you say, what the heck? Now, May or early fall are the best times to visit the Amalfi Coast. Now there's a beautiful island called Capri just off the coast. Located in the Tyrrhenian Sea, it's one of the best places to spend the summer in Italy. To get to Capri, you can take a boat for Naples that takes about 45 minutes. The Faradlione is one of my favorite things about it, a large sea stack that sticks out from the island. 
you should definitely take a boat. There's a little arch that you can drive a boat through. That's the best way to see the whole island, including all of its hidden grottos and jaw-dropping coastline. Villas like Villa Jovis can also be found on Capri, which was built by Emperor Tiberius. You can't miss the famous Blue Grotto if you like to dive and enjoy the sea. A grotto with blue waters and a depth of 15 to 20 meters, where you can swim and fall in love. You don't need a car because you can easily walk anywhere you need to go. After that, we'll head north to Tuscany, which is a beautiful area in the middle of Italy. It is known for its scenery, history, and art. It's a land of green hills with lots of small towns on top. I mean, I've been crazy about Tuscany ever since I saw the movie Gladiator. Tuscany has a lot to offer. You can try wine in Chianti, take it easy in hill towns like San Gimignano, or learn about Renaissance art in Florence. A city from the Middle Ages, the historic center of Siena, is one of the most famous places to visit in Italy. The biggest of the Tuscan islands is Elba, which has great beaches. The tower that tilts? Pisa, it's here, yes. The Piazza dei Miracoli is a must-see when you come to this city. There you can take a picture of yourself holding the Tower of Pisa that leans. Climb to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa to see beautiful views of the square. You can also see the Monumental Cemetery, the Baptistery, and the Duomo. Then go through Borgo Stretto, one of the most charming streets in the city, and you'll end up at the Arno River. Here you can find beautiful ancient towns. San Gimignano is one of my favorite towns in Tuscany. It's a beautiful medieval city situated on a hill. The medieval watchtowers are one of the most famous, and there are still 14 watchtowers left. You can rent a car and spend a whole week driving around this beautiful area. In the north of Italy, there is the most romantic place that is like no other in the world. Venice, a unique city built on a canal surrounded by the Adriatic Sea. It is one of the most beautiful places in Europe. It's an archipelago of 118 islands in northeastern Italy. These islands are linked by hundreds of beautiful bridges and scenic rivers. The most well-known canal is the Grand Canal, which cuts the city in half. Even though Venice is often crowded, it is well worth going to see its beautiful sites like St. Mark's Square and Basilica, Doge's Palace and Rialta Bridge. Taking a gondola ride along the waterways, narrow streets, stone bridges, palaces, and Renaissance churches of Venice make for a dream gondola ride. If you want to learn more about the city of canals, you can look for the beautiful spiral stairs called Scala Cantarini del Bavolo, and visit the famous Bridge of Sighs, which got its name from the size of prisoners who saw the sky and the sea for the last time. Climb the Campanile for the best view of Venice. And before you leave, buy a mask, which is Venice's most well-known gift. Going south to Naples, it's a city that is full of life and good food. As the capital of the Campania region in southern Italy, it's one of the busiest places in the country. Have a cup of coffee to start your day. Espresso is a dark, short, and strong drink that Italians love. In a Neapolitan cafe, you can get more than just coffee. Eat Sfogliatelle with your coffee, you can find them at Desvogiatella in the central station of Naples. Also try Neapolitan pizza at Vesi, you have to try the real pizzas that are baked in a stone oven. Fold your piece in half and take a bite. On a day trip, you can see the beautiful ruins of Pompeii and Herculaneum with Vesuvius in the background. Must tour the Spanish Quarter, which is where Naples began, at the impressive Toledo Metro stop. Just find out about an area with balconies, laundry, street art, and graffiti. Next, find out what makes the Pigma Seca market so interesting with a long history that has everything you could need, including great fresh fish, especially pes frito. Spacanapoli is full of shocks, the street that splits the city of Naples in two. After Naples, we'll go to Florence, the famous city that is the capital of Tuscany. Florence is my favorite city in all of Italy. It is thought to be the place where the Renaissance began. This is where Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo left their marks. It's like a huge open-air museum because there are so many beautiful buildings, sculptures, and paintings all over the city. The Florence Cathedral is one of the most beautiful buildings. When you look at it, you can't believe how big it is. 
It was finished in 1436, and I can't believe the people back then were able to build such a big dome. Next, the Ponte Vecchio Bridge, which goes over the Arno River, is another historic spot. I can't say enough good things about Florence, it's such a great place. Places to must visit include the Piazza del Duomo, Campanile, Piazza della Signoria, and Palazzo Vecchio. But you can add more to your trip here if you want to, like the Uffizi Gallery. Don't forget to try out this city's food. After Florence, we'll go back to the main part of Italy to see Rome, one of the most popular and well-known cities in the world. It used to be the capital of the Roman Empire, but now it is the capital and government center of Italy. Its history goes back more than 2,000 years, to 753 BC when it was founded. Known for the ancient Roman buildings and the big, complicated Vatican City, don't forget to see the buildings and the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican. Ancient buildings are still standing and are visited by millions of people every year. An oval-shaped amphitheater built in 80 AD, the Colosseum is one of the most famous buildings in the city. It was the biggest arena ever built, and it could fit between 50 and 80,000 people. And the Pantheon will take you back time of the Roman Empire. Next, the Trevi Fountain is one of my favorite sites. It was built in 1762 and has a Baroque style. Well, the breathtaking Street Peter's Basilica beckons with its grandeur and a promise of unforgettable moments. Rome has so much to see and do, from old, romantic plazas to beautiful churches and Renaissance buildings, that it could take months or even years to see everything. I mean, Rome has so much to see that I hope you can all go there someday. Well, that's it for my top 10 places in Italy, and there are so many more. I could make a list of the top 100 things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon, and tell me in the comments below where your favorite place in Italy is. And hey, if you're passionate about adventure and travel, don't forget to visit our ushistorian.com website for more intriguing tales and travel guides. I'll see you later. Peace out.